Hello my dear students, welcome to the MS Science Academy, myself Meenu Srivastava and today we are going to discuss about the beta oxidation of fatty acid. Now first the one question, first question uh, which arise in your mind then what is the fatty acid? Actually the fat, the fat molecule just combined or composed with fatty acid and glycerol, fatty acid and glycerol. Okay, so here the fatty acid, uh, how the glycerol will metabolize in our body that is not in our syllabus, but how the fatty acid metabolize in our body that uh, that topic in, in our syllabus. Okay, so now come to the fatty acid part. As the fatty acid represent that the carbon chain, there is a many numbers of the carbon chain like the 15 carbons containing 16 carbon containing like that i am just representing like it dash dash means the n number of carbon chain okay and the last terminal group containing the carboxylic group which is the acidic group that's why it is named as the as the fatty acid the fatty acid are of the two type first is the saturated and second is the unsaturated fatty acid uh, that is the saturated fatty acid contains only the single bond okay in the carbon chain it contains only the single bond that is that is why it is known as the saturated fatty acid but in the carbon chain if it contain the double bond or triple bond then it can comes under the category of the unsaturated fatty acid or you can say it's a PUFA poly un poly unsaturated fatty acid if in the advertisement, if you just concentrate on the advertisement part, oil and different type of the oils, olive oils and that type of the advertisement comes in the TV, then if you will concentrate on that advertisement, they said that it contain PUFA, it contain PUFA, it contain PUFA. Then what is the PUFA? It's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Why they are just concentrating on the PUFA? Because the oil which contain the PUFA means the unsaturation, that type of the oil or the fat will not having the tendency to deposit on our body. Okay, so if we are taking the unsaturated fatty acid, so that type of the oil will not at all deposit in our body. Okay, so that uh, unsaturated fatty acids are good for our health. Okay, now come to the uh, oxidation part. Now, first suppose that this is the uh, carbon chain and here is the COH group, last terminal group. The functional, the functional group is the carboxylic group and the nearest functional group the carbon which is present the nearest functional group that is the alpha carbon and beside the uh, just uh, just beside the alpha carbon this is the beta carbon and just beside the beta carbon this is the omega carbon so here the beta oxidation represent that the carbon splitting or the metabolization is targeted on the beta carbon Okay, so that is that is why it is named as the beta oxidation. The one question you uh, just arise in your mind should arise in your mind that uh, uh, is the alpha oxidation takes place? Yeah, sure. Alpha oxidation also takes place. Is the omega oxidation takes place? Yeah, sure. It's also uh, it's also takes place. Uh, omega oxidation also occur in the cell occur in the cell but the preferably we studied about the beta oxidation in some uh, universities there's a uh, in some uh, courses alpha oxidation and the uh, gamma uh, omega oxidations also come but preferably preferably the beta oxidation is the most important okay so now come to the so now you know what is why the we are just concentrating on the beta oxidation and what is the name why it is named as a beta oxidation because the carbon which is just present beside uh, the alpha carbon and alpha carbon is just attached with the functional group okay so the oxidation of that beta carbon takes place that is why it is named as the beta oxidation so now come to the part of the uh, stages of the beta oxidation pathway first step is that the transport of fatty acid uh, so, sorry the activation of fatty acid first the fatty acid is oxid uh, is activated with the help of atp and it happens in the uh, cytosol okay so uh, uh, complete beta oxidation if we want to tell that the where the beta oxidation occur the beta oxidation occur in the mitochondria in the mitochondria 
and the in in your syllabus that is the palmitic acid the formula of the palmitic acid i have just written here c16h32o2 the palmitic acid formula and the place where or the site where the beta oxidation takes place that is the mitochondrial matrix okay now here the first step is the beta oxidation acti uh, sorry fatty acid activation so during the fatty acid ox oxidation uh, activation the atp is combined with the fatty acid and just convert into the acyl adenylate and this acyl aden adenylate is convert into the acyl coenzyme a okay this acyl coenzyme a is ready to transport into the mitochondria but there is one uh, issue is with, uh, this one big issue is that this acyl coenzyme is not at all permeable for the mitochondria so here the acyl coenzyme a is transported with the help of mitochondrial uh, uh, with the help of carnitine shuttle system or we can say carnitine carrier system now come to the carnitine carrier system because the acyl coenzyme a because the acyl coenzyme a is further going for the beta oxidation so the transportation of acyl coenzyme is very much important so the carnitine carrier system or carnitine shuttle system just transport this acyl coenzyme a into the mitochondrial matrix now here how it transport this acyl coenzyme a now the first question the students are con getting confused in that that it's a here you uh, the student asked that you will you have write, written here rc double bond o okay and you uh, here you you have written here r ch2 ch2 so my dear students i am i just want to represent the carbon chain just i want to represent the carbon chain okay so if i am writing here r ch2 ch2 so no worry about it you can write here r ch2 ch2 if i am writing here r complete r if i am writing here so that is also not a big issue so just my target is that representing the carbon chain okay so don't worry about because the students are getting confused that where the other two carbon where are the other, other two carbon so there are two carbons are present in this r group i am just representing this complete r group in this okay so if you are getting confused then from starting you will write here r from starting you will write here r from starting you will write here r okay so you will not get confused confusion okay so here that acyl coenzyme a just attached with the carnitine okay just attached with the carnitine and it convert into the acyl carnitine okay it's convert into the uh, acyl carnitine acyl carnitine okay now the carnitine uh, this conversion takes place with the help of carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 okay now this acyl carnitine is easily permeable for the mito inner mitochondrial membrane and reached to the mitochondrial matrix okay now this carnitine acyl carnitine is just convert into the carnitine and just release its acyl coenzyme a okay here acyl coenzyme a this conversion this acyl carnitine conversion takes place with the help of carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 and this releasing acyl carnitine releasing the acyl coenzyme a with the help of carnitine palmitoyl transfer trans uh, transferase 2 okay now this carnitine is which is released back into the cytosol okay now this acyl coenzyme a this acyl coenzyme a comes or reached into the mitochondrial matrix so it is start for the further it is ready for the further beta oxidation now come to the beta oxidation path now come to the main beta oxidation pathway as uh, when the beta uh, when the acetyl coenzyme a reached in the mitochondrial matrix then it will start or it will uh, proceed the beta oxidation okay now here in the beta oxidation proper pathway uh, if uh, in the examination uh, they ask about the beta oxidation then you should write from the first activation of fatty acid carnitine system then you will come in this point directly you should not come here because the why is it so because the acyl coenzyme is not easily possible to reach into the mitochondrial matrix so you have to uh, tell us the examiner then where the acetyl coenzyme comes from 
okay that's your duty if you want to get full marks okay so here the acyl coenzyme may reach into the mitochondrial matrix then it start for the oxidation here in the presence of the acyl coenzyme may dehydrogenase the oxidation reaction takes place and this acyl coenzyme dehydrogenase convert into the trans enoyl coenzyme a why the uh, dehydrogenase means that alpha beta carbon here the beta carbon hydrogen and the alpha carbon one one carbon one one hydrogen released in the form of h2 and this h2 combined with the fad fad and it forms the fad h2 this reaction is known as the oxidation acyl coenzyme may convert into the alpha beta enoyl coenzyme a okay now here this enoyl coenzyme a just convert into the beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme a with the help of hydration reaction okay so here the second reaction hydration takes place and this hydration reaction the hydrogen uh, sorry uh, the water re molecule react with the help of enoyl coenzyme a hydratase enzyme and on the beta carbon on the beta carbon the hydroxy group is attached okay so here the beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme a is generated here the beta uh, on the beta carbon this is the beta carbon the hydroxy group is attached okay here the beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme may dehydrogenase uh, uh, after the hydration reaction the third reaction that is the oxidation means the uh, after the hydration further oxidation second oxi oxidation reaction takes place so here the beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme a dehydrogenase catalyze this second oxidation and convert into the beta keto acyl coenzyme a beta keto acyl coenzyme a what is the keto group the keto group is is like that only so here the uh, so in this reaction where the uh, hydroxy group is attached it remove okay it remove is this hydrogen is removed and form the double bond this hydrogen is removed and the nadh and uh, this hydrogen is removed and attached with the nad and form the nadh and this keto group this is the keto group is formed okay so this is the beta keto acyl coenzyme a group is formed okay here now the further reaction the fourth reaction that is the cleavage reaction in that reaction this uh, uh, with the help of this this carbon two carbon fragment is formed okay with the uh, uh, as the acetyl coenzyme a with the help of thio thiolase this two carbon fragment is generated this two carbon fragment is generated and this two carbon group is known as the acetyl coenzyme a which further go towards the krebs cycle or we can say tricarboxylic acid pathway okay and if you don't know about the tricarboxylic or the krebs cycle pathway you will type in your youtube channel uh, in my youtube channel that is the ms science academy uh, tca cycle or the krebs cycle you will find my lecture okay so with the help of thio thiolase this cleavage occur and the two carbon segment which is the acetyl coenzyme is formed okay so here the two carbon fragment is liberated as the acetyl coenzyme a so in the palmitic acid there are 16 carbon okay so the palmitic acid the palmitic acid has the 16 carbon okay so in the seven cycle of the beta oxidation 14 carbons are released 14 carbons are released in the form of 7 acetyl coenzyme a okay because the each acetyl coenzyme a contain the two carbon okay so in the seven cycles two two carbons are formed and these two carbons is from the 14 carbon now remaining the two carbon is also as release the acetyl coenzyme a why i'm saying like this because the students are getting confused that if in the palmitic acid has the 16 carbon then why the beta oxidation occur in the seven times okay so for that point of point uh, which i want to clear that in the 16 carbon the seven carbons the seven in uh, in the seven cycles of the beta oxidation 14 carbons are released so the remaining two carbons remaining two carbons last two carbons are released automatically as the acetyl coenzyme a so that's why in the 16 carbon unit the beta oxidation pathway runs for the seven times only okay so this is the final reaction 
the palmitoyl coenzyme a palmitoyl coenzyme is the activated palmitic acid okay which we have just recently we have studied the palmitoyl coenzyme a is further oxidized eight uh, uh, seven cycle uh, is seven times and uh, so the seven times or the cycles are running so the eight acetyl coenzyme is formed and seven fadh2 seven nadh is formed now come to the energetics part 7 FADH, so okay, so 7 into 1.5 because the 1 FADH is equal to the 1.5 ATP. So 7 into 1.5 is the 10.5 ATP. 7 NADH, 1 NADH is equal to the 2.5 ATP and that is equal to the 17.5 ATP. 8 acetyl coenzyme A, 1 acetyl coenzyme A runs 1 Krebs cycle and the 8 acetyl coenzyme A runs the 8, uh, runs the 8 uh, Krebs cycle. 1 acetyl coenzyme may generate the 10 ATP so the 10 uh, so the 8 acetyl coenzyme may generate the 80 ATP but here the one but the 2 ATP loss will be there why because during the activation of the fatty acid 2 ATPs are lost okay so here the total ATP is generated for the complete metabolization or the beta oxidation of the palmitic acid is the 106 ATP okay so here the beat in the beta oxidation pathway the palmitic acid in the palmitic acid the beta oxidation pathway runs the seven times and the total ATP is generated in the complete seven side seven times is the 106 ATPs this is all for the uh, beta oxidation I hope you enjoy, in, enjoyed my lecture any doubt kindly ask in the comment section otherwise please like share, subscribe Thank you.